This is a journey that will take seven and a half hours to reach my destination, 450 miles from home. It's December in the UK, and we just had heavy snowfall followed by a storm known as Bert. Logically, we should sit inside by a warm fire, toast marshmallows and eat mince pies at this time of year, but I don't do logic. In fact, the journey we're about to embark on is anything but logical. In fact, it's pretty crazy. We're heading north to the highlands of Scotland and one of the coldest parts of the UK. Before you question my sanity, I should tell you that I'm heading to one of the few golf courses that remains on my bucket list to play. I just hope we get there. Right, the good news is we've arrived because there was a point where I didn't think we were going to make it. Roads closed, bridges closed, but after a long, long wait, I finally got to a golf course that I've wanted to play for a number of years, to say the least, and it's a pretty special place. What you're going to find out there is, is a traditional links course. You know, everything is by the sea. Every time you're standing where you are, you'll see the sea, which for us makes it a proper traditional links course. It, it goes straight out and straight back. Again, traditional link stuff. But what makes us unique, we think, is, is the style of golf that you're going to play. It's, um, most of the greens are, are, are quite large, but they're all kind of raised, very raised plateau stuff, so the ball can run off quite easily and surrounding the greens are quite deep, revetted, you know, the stacked turf bunkers. So the challenge really isn't off the tee because the fairways are quite generous and there isn't a great deal of rough or wind bushes. So you can generally find your ball, but it's how you approach the green. And even though the greens are very large, there is a certain side of the fairway to attack the pin from. And, and so it's, it, it is a, a game of your short game, really. You know, it's your visualisation off the tee to get the ball in the right place. And then once you hit the ball towards the green, it's making sure you're, you're hitting it into the right place on the green to feed down. Because the greens are very well shaped. And there's lots of undulations in the green. So your, your putting will be well tested as well as your short game. But whatever happens, enjoy the views and take in everything that, that the scenery gives you while you're enjoying the challenge of uh, playing around the greens. If, if you can walk off here and tell me you didn't three putt, you'll be doing very well. Right now you're witnessing one of the great landscapes in the world of golf. tee shots are always a little daunting but made a little bit more so when the uh, the green staff decides to come and work on the fairway bunker that you're about to hit off Went a little bit right, but it was definitely the cautious side. But off the first tee, I think we'll take that one. This kind of golf hole makes me smile. It's the shortest of par threes, and it looks fairly innocuous. And then you realise the big slopes, runoffs, and pop bunkers just waiting for you if things go slightly astray. That could be quite good if the yardage is right. Oh, don't be long. Sit. Sit. Oh, I think we might have gone off the back. I 
right on the flag as well. So my pitch mark was uh, about 10 foot from the flag. And you can see where I finished up. And in the summer, I would imagine it's uh, maybe down into the rough anyway. That's quite good, I think. That's quite good. Yes, it's better than quite good. I can't stop smiling at this place though, and it's, uh, it's not a phrase you often hear me say. It might be visible the smile, but it's there inwardly. Right, so I was told by the pro that we start to see the full cause when we get to the third tee, and that's a backdrop, isn't it? That is a backdrop. It doesn't get any better than that, and I cannot believe the weather, by the way. I'm actually, uh, right now, I'm warm, the sun's coming down on me, and uh, I've got dry shoes as well. You might be questioning why I keep hitting the ball in the, uh, in the well, the rough. And it's, it's strategic, it's as simple as that. It's mats off the fairway, which I'm not overly keen on. If you believe that, you believe anything. Right, we've got a bit to go here. And if that goes any further left, it's a lost ball. It's coming in. I think we might have just got away with that. John Sutherland was our secretary and he invited old Tom Morris to come up and extend it from 9 to 18 holes. And uh, so that was in 1886 that old Tom came up to see us and w walked around and saw the things. And what we've realised now from the digitisation of newspapers, we've now done, done a lot more research into what old Tom Morris did. And we can th really quite confidently say he's the man that invented or, or decided that plateau greens were a good thing. Before that, greens were always on the flat bit and a bowl bit, but he, he recognised some of the shapes and forms in the golf course at Dorno and put the flag on top of the mound rather than at the bottom. So that's, that's been something new for us in the last couple of years. So when you're out there playing in the plateau greens, thank old Tom for that. Um, but yes, Donald Ross was born and brought up here. Uh, he started life as a carpenter, but it was a good golfer. And John Sutherland, again, a, a very important man in our history, recognised the talent that Donald had for golf and invited him to be our first professional and also our first greenkeeper. So the, the, both, both roles combined. So he sent, uh, Donald agreed to that, and he sent Donald down to Old Tom Morris and he studied with Old Tom in St Andrews for two years, came back and gave us five years of the life at the club here. Uh, and then he went off to the States in 1899 with the club's blessing. So what we realise now for those that have played some Donald Ross courses, of which there's over 400 in the States, what he saw here gave him his inspiration for the, the, the courses that he designed over there. And Pinehurst number two, one of his most famous ones, has the raised plateau greens with the runoffs and the deep bunkers. So he took that uh, and used that as his inspiration and his imagination for building 400 great golf courses. And that is a, one of the big reasons that we get many, many visitors coming to Dornock from North America to see where Donald grew up and where, where, where he started his golf game and where that was ingrained in his mind for his golf course design business. So playing so late in the winter, there's a few compromises to make, um, albeit they ain't bothering me, but we're playing on forward tees, which means the design of the course is slightly different, or the layout. So we'll be teeing off a way back there, bunkers on the right would be very much in play, because it's a little bit of a slight dog leg, whereas we're straight down. And, uh, and things like, as I say, the fairway mats, but you've got to protect courses like this. So it means I'm going with hybrid as opposed to, I would assume, would be driver from up top. Right. Well, I wasn't going in the bunkers, but I gone too far left. No. There you get strategic placement in the light rough means I can play from where it lies.
fairways of a golf course that can only be described as a classic was a privilege, and I very soon realised this pilgrimage would leave its mark on my soul. I'd never been happier strolling the links. This could well be old Tom's finest creation. The one thing about traditional links, as you've probably heard already, is it uh, can often be nine in one direction and then you flip around and uh, you face the other way. We're now facing the other way, but it also means the wind is uh, was helping us all the way out. And uh, that means on the way back, it's gonna be into us. I don't think, I was gonna mention the beach, but it's a long way left, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, and that's a good one. That's a good one. Right, let's make our way back. Well, 10 is one of those par threes where it's such a small little green, surrounded by bunkers at the front. And I'm playing from 1.30 at the minute off of Windsor Tee. The back tee there on the horizon uh, must be pretty scary because uh, well, you've got a lot of stuff down and stuff, I mean gorse, down the right. And you can't really go left, so it's scary enough from here. And it quite a decent shot, but just a little bit short back into the breeze. Happy though, as Larry. Now, picture of the week is another tough one, in my opinion at least. Go for it, Hannah or Andy, in the comment section down below. from Neil how difficult the greens are and to not three foot well that's a that's a fair old challenge I wanted to fail that he also talked about runoffs and this little par three ten zips down that side if you miss it right we've walked past the bunkers and we've got these same severe runoffs down to the left hand side so uh, yeah landing on the green is one thing we were a little bit short and then uh, trying to two put is uh, no easy task either. We'll give this one a go, but I've left about 10 or 12 foot still. One of those uh, courses where nothing is ever flat when it comes to a putt or a fairway lie, to be fair. No, it probably was flatter than I actually, uh, actually thought. So there you go. There's a three putt, just as uh, Neil predicted. We stayed in the incredible Dornoch Station Hotel, which is adjacent to the first fairway at Royal Dornoch, with views across the Dornoch Firth. This hotel is pure luxury, with opulent decor and truly unique character, as you will find in all the marine and lawn hotels. cannot recommend these hotels highly enough. I'm going to wander back up to the, uh, what is the 13th tee. We'll be playing a little bit forward again. Right on the beach, beaches are gorgeous up here. It's, a, it's at a point where you wonder, at what point do we quit or give in? And I mean by traveling and trying to keep this Monday series going through the winter. Because last year it was, it was tough. We had some disappointing days, but then two days ago, or maybe not even that, 24, 36 hours ago, this whole golf course was covered in snow. And I did mention on the journey up and the beginning of the video, I didn't think we were going to get here at one point because uh, it was grim. But we're here and we just had, well, probably one of the best experiences I've had on a golf course. That includes the stay as well and where we're at. And uh, if we'd looked at forecasts, we'd have give up. So yeah, it's, uh, you've got to be cautious, obviously, but yeah, I'm so glad we got here. Just point that way for a second. It's into the sun, but it's another par three of, uh, well, the highest quality and uh, no place to miss. Anyway, Slange, as we're up in Scotland.
club has hosted royalty, presidents and major winners. And today, it can finally add the average golfer to that list of illustrious visitors. I'm not quite sure I'll make the role of honour, but Royal Dornoch will certainly make mine. I was hoping to leave myself a little bit of a tapping on the last and uh, no pressure. We finish on a par and uh, overall performance half decent. That's our Dornoch station and uh, that's where we're going to now. It's nice to have just a very short walk. Go back to the clubhouse first. And I'll probably have a little wander around Dornoch as well because it's a really nice uh, town. Very pleasant up here. And don't forget to join me next week because we'll have another episode. It'll be filmed tomorrow. Um, and that's coming from another very special golf course up on uh, what is a very special region. It was well worth the journey, that's all I can say. I'd come back tomorrow. <laughs>